In this video I'm going to talk about thalassemia and thalassemia basically happens when uh, one of the protein uh, subunits uh, of uh, the hemoglobin molecule um, is not uh, properly uh, synthesized or uh, produced. So you've got this hemoglobin molecule and um, I'll sort of draw it and it usually consists of these um, alpha globin and beta globin um, polypeptide chains basically and if one or more of these uh, globin molecules are not produced in the proper quantity there's decreased production of at least one globin molecule then you'll get thalassemia so it's, it's essentially a structural uh, uh, defect so how would uh, a person present with uh, thalassemia you know, why what are the symptoms and why do these symptoms occur well it's important to understand a few things before you just list the symptoms because otherwise it doesn't make much sense just to memorize a bunch of symptoms. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is splenomegaly. Instead of just listing the symptoms or the signs on physical exam and then expecting you to memorize it, I think it's better to explain it and that makes it easier. Well, why does it, splenomegaly basically, as you know, means enlargement of the spleen. Well, why does that happen? Well, the thing is the spleen is responsible for um, getting rid of the red blood cells uh, once they've uh, completed their life cycle which is uh, approximately 60 to 90 days. In, a, in thalassemia there's a large number of RBCs that need to be destroyed because the hemoglobin molecules are uh, abnormal. So the spleen actually has to work harder. So because the spleen works harder you get enlargement of the spleen. So this is basically directly related to the destruction of a large number of RBCs. And if you remember that this is a red blood cell, inside the red blood cell lives the hemoglobin molecules. And there's, there's many of them. I mean, it's got to be in the thousands, maybe even a million. But bottom line is that when you have abnormal hemoglobin molecules that essentially leads to a, a greater than normal level of destruction of these red blood cells by the spleen and that's why the spleen enlarges because it has to work harder so that's the first thing the second uh, uh, symptom or sign is uh, iron overload Now why does this happen? Well, because um, the hemoglobin molecule is abnormal and that directly leads to abnormal uh, red blood cells, the uh, red blood cells are destroyed by the spleen. Um, so the patient essentially becomes deficient in red blood cells and becomes anemic. So anemia is a very common uh, finding in, in thalassemia. Now when a person becomes anemic they're treated with these transfusions blood transfusions and when they're treated with transfusions repeatedly they develop iron overload the iron that exists in the blood starts to uh, overload in the body um, with each transfusion every time they're given blood it contains iron in it and that iron eventually accumulates and overloads in the body and that can cause problems because eventually the iron can um, deposit into certain organs and uh, cause um, severe uh, symptomatology. One of the places that it can deposit is in the heart muscle and that can lead to a heart failure. That's the second thing I wanted to mention. One, two, Splenomegaly, iron overload. Third thing I wanted to mention in terms of signs and symptoms is uh, bone deformities. So why does bone deformities occur? 
Well, in a, in a patient with thalassemia, the uh, because the, they have this uh, abnormal hemoglobin, the red blood cells are abnormal, and essentially that leads to uh, a uh, decreased number of normal red blood cells in the body, and that leads to anemia. So the body responds by uh, wanting to produce more uh, red blood cells or blood cells in particular and that is when the bone marrow kicks in and the bone, bone marrow essentially starts to um, have increased level of activity in an attempt to produce more um, blood cells now when that happens the bone marrow which as most of you know as the name implies even lives inside the bone the bone marrow will cause the bones to expand which causes essentially the bones to widen and when the bones widen in the body it causes these bony deformities and those bony deformities can appear in the cranial bones uh, they can also appear um, in other parts of the body and that can interfere with growth especially in children the fourth and final uh, uh, symptom and sign I, I wanted to mention is I think I just mentioned it is uh, slowed growth rates the bony deformities contribute to that and so does the anemia you know the the patient with thalassemia is chronically anemic um, so that can contribute to the slow growth rates so like I said instead of just memorizing these uh, signs and symptoms it's important to sort of understand them and I think that will help you uh, remember on a test so now how do you how do you diagnose it well the most common initial test is a CBC which will give you the hemoglobin count and the hemoglobin is often quite low, the patient's anemic. Um, let's just say it can be less than 6. Um, normal hemoglobin, of course, varies. It's between 12 and 16 in an adult. But if it's that low, less than 6, it's obviously very anemic. Another uh, lab test is MCV. And the MCV value tells you what type of anemia. And in particular, uh, thalassemias are microcytic, microcytic anemias. Other basic tests are iron tests, which, which can show iron overload in the body. And these are very basic and nonspecific tests that you can use to diagnose anemia. But to diagnose thalassemia in particular, you have to do a special test called a hemoglobin electrophoresis. And this test basically um, shows you the uh, elevation of the different types of um, uh, hem hemoglobin in the body and will make will let you decipher or differentiate between normal hemoglobin and abnormal hemoglobin so this is really the the most specific test there's other tests you can do that are more specific to diagnosing anemia peripheral smear for example but these are really will show you about anemia this one will show you about thalassemia okay so now you've diagnosed it how do you treat it well treatment unfortunately there's no cure sometimes you can do a splenectomy just taking out the spleen in an effort uh, to not have the spleen destroy as many red blood cells um, other, time, other things you can do is, remember I mentioned that because of repeated transfusions to, to help the anemia, the patients become overloaded with iron, where you can help that by doing chelation therapy. And what that just means is that it, uh, it basically, uh, excess iron is removed from the body by doing this. And then, um, really that there isn't much more than that um, giving red blood cell transfusions instead of full blood sometimes helps 
just a couple of short vignettes. Patient has long-standing severe hemolytic anemia. So we got MCV of less than 80. Or characterized by hyperchromic cells. Electrophoresis demonstrates a near complete absence of beta chains. Several years later, the patient develops cardiac failure. Remember we talked about that. Iron overload. Because the patient is uh, has thalassemia, they become anemic. And uh, to treat the anemia, they get multiple transfusions. And the transfusions, uh, because they have iron in them, eventually the iron overloads in the body and can deposit in certain parts of the body, in, ter in, in particular cardiac muscle. And that leads to the cardiac failure. Intracardiac deposition of which of the following would be likely to contribute to the cardiac failure? Well, I, I just mentioned it, actually. And, of course, the answer is iron. So that's pretty straightforward. It's a good question, though. Uh, second one. Seven-month-old boy of Mediterranean origin. So that's part of the epidemiology of thalassemia. It's more common in certain geographic regions. Presents with paler, so that's a sign of anemia. Abdominal distension. Um, Non-specific abdominal distension... Um, let's just keep going here both of which are progressive might be related to failure to thrive perinatal history was uneventful and the boy is noted to be pale with poor feeding decreased activity and failure to thrive well there you go a plateau splenomegaly okay so his spleen is enlarged mild bony abnormalities of the skull most likely diagnosis is well you've got quite a few things um, on here uh, that I've talked about in terms of the uh, the signs and symptoms you've got the anemia uh, you've got the bony uh, abnormalities uh, enlarged spleen is there and slow is, so is the slowed growth rate and all of these are part of thalassemia which would be choice B